Hello everyone, today I bring you another Should You Watch. Today's film is The Brass Teapot, a film featuring a dirt poor, happily newly wet couple who find a teapot that generates money whenever it, it is exposed to pain. How it affects them, their relationship, and how far they are willing to go in order to get some easy money. If that sounds interesting to you, the Should You Watch is a yes, you should. If you aren't quite sold yet, let me tell you more about it. The main actors of this film are Juno Temple from Maleficent and Atonement, and Michael Angarano from Wildcard and This Is Us. The film starts off with some historical tableaus, showing depictions of the brass teapot at different times and locations throughout history. The film starts in proper, with the main couple waking up to some screeching alarms. They seem quite happy with each other, a young married couple. However, in the first few lines of dialogue, that shows how little money they currently have. Having nothing at all in the fridge, and not having any money to buy groceries. If I had a million dollars, I'd stay in bed with you all day, is what John says to Alice. It's shown that John works as a cold caller, selling television warranties. John is shown to be quippy, while messing around with his boss. Alice is visibly nervous while preparing for a job interview. It does not go well. When they get home, we meet a huge jackass in the form of their landlord, a creepy bully type, talking about their continued late payments and assaulting John on the way out. They attend a party with their friends from school, with their dress code being fancy and them showing up in casual clothes, further pushing their point home that they are poor. The guys seem to be very good friends, and the women discuss their families and what hard times they've currently fallen on. Their friends seem equally financially challenged. The next morning, John and Alice are out on a drive, discussing jobs and get t-boned by a truck, thankfully both unhurt. When talking to the police about the crash, here we see the first shot of the physical brass teapot, with it being removed from where it was stowed away by an old woman who owned a bit and bob store near the crash site, showing the first sign of danger that this would bring by Alice running across the road after it almost getting run over by a car in the process. The phone rings, drawing the old woman away, giving Alice a chance to swipe the teapot. Seemingly enchanted by it, Alice tucks it under her top and runs out with it, and quickly drives away with John. The teapot already showing signs of changing her behaviour. His reaction to her stealing it shows it is unlike her and out of her nature. During a phone call, here is the first sign of the teapot's power, as Alice burns herself with the curling iron and the pot visibly shakes. She lifts up the lid and finds two crisp hundred dollar bills resting in there, suggesting that it manifests money through physical pain. She tests it again, burning herself more, and sure enough, it spits out seven hundred dollars. For a relatively minor, temporary pain, it seemed too good to be true, given how cash-strapped they currently are. She then wraps it up by viciously kicking the metal chair with nothing but her slippers on, the pot showering her with even more money, proving that the worse the pain, the higher the payout. She puts her hand through the cabinet and it actually sprays money out everywhere, showing this pot's malicious hunger for pain, playing off people's greed, kind of reminiscent of people eating washing machine Tide Pod tablets for their 15 minutes of internet fame. In the next scene, we see John being let go from his job, his boss describing him as a shoddy salesman. John comes home to find Alice in a slightly beaten up state, with bloody cuts on her forehead and laying on the bed, looking as if something terrible has happened. The first time John touches the teapot, he feels like he's having a panic attack, and the people whispering sound effect is used to create a vile atmosphere. After this, we see another demonstration of how it works. Alice trying to convince John, believing it's better than working, and it's a gift from the gods, while John states that it could end very badly. Alice wants to use it to get out of their situation, a better home, make a million dollars, and never work again. Believing that it came to them for a reason, it did. She stole it. We see them sleeping, the pot cradled in her arms, her relationship with the pot becoming the golems with the one ring. The next morning, John, seeing the dangers of the pot, takes it upon himself to dispose of it, leaving her a note reiterating what he said last night about it ending very badly and her getting 
very angry at this. However, the store they swipe it from is closed and for a lease. Looking abandoned, he takes it to the Antiques Roadshow in another effort to get rid of it. The Antiques appraiser giving his estimation of where it came from, being from the Middle East or ancient China. While saying this, it cuts to a shot of a man who seems to recognise the pot and appears to be tracking it all over the world, given the fabric ties on the world map. The appraiser describes it as easily hundreds if not thousands of years old. When pressed for information, John spouts a line about the previous owners of the pot, seemingly in a line that wasn't spoken by him, but through him. The appraiser gives him an evaluation of $5,000. In the next scene, it's shown that John has not sold it and is now committed to hurting themselves in order to get a bit of easy money, citing that they will earn a million dollars and then stop. In a funny montage of them showing how they hurt themselves to make the money, including holding their hands above a stove, going for a bikini wax, a rather unsettling trip to the dentist, and getting a couple's tattoo. All of this clearly paying off are the deposit wads of cash into the top of their toilet tank. We then catch up with our married couple in a downright tense dinner with her family. A suspicious mother, a superior feeling older sister, and a vanilla husband, clearly trying to just keep the peace while the mother questions John about their newfound wealth, while the sisters take pot shots at each other. It's after this that we see them being, quote, officially out of debt, although it's here we see the just one million rule start to slide, and greed begin to take over as they talk about life's necessities. There's a knock on the door, and a pair of men, posing as religious missionaries, begin assaulting John, and walking into their home and ransacking it, clearly looking for the teapot. The adult grandchildren of the woman Alice had stolen it off, clearly angered that they had stolen it from their now-dead grandmother. After a beating from the grandsons, the couple decide to try and determine what the teapot is and where it's from. At the library, they come across a book of magical items, dating its creation back 2,000 years. Skimming through it, Alice finds a page titled Beware, with the dead bodies and clearly bad times happening, but rips it out before John can see it. Despite this, John reads a paragraph that was warning of ill tidings to whoever uses it, and is clearly unsettled by this. Unsettled or not, it is clearly not enough to stop them from going on a spending spree. Jewelry, cars, and a new house, with a lot of new clothes in it. This lifestyle clearly already affecting them as they shun their friendships with their old down-on-their-luck friends in favour of their new snootier rich friends. This cuts to a shot of the man who is tracking the pot all over the world, showing up at their door. He warns them of the grave dangers of the pot, but they refuse to listen to him. At an expensive dinner with their new friends, they offer to pay, and it's here we see the first crack start to appear in their relationship over deciding who should hurt themselves in order to afford the meal. In another jackass entry by their former landlord, he breaks into their new house, swipes the pot, and tries to run it over with his truck, proving ineffective as it seems to repair itself moments later. Clearly unsettled by this, they take the pot to the traveller, who came to their door the other day, claiming it had been in the hands of some of the most evil people in history, and in the wrong hands could cause great harm. If there was any hatred or evil in them, the pot would draw it out. He offers to rid them of it, hiding it so that it won't ever be found but it must be given to them of their own volition, and Alice refuses to give it up. The next morning they are visited again by the grandsons. They steal the saved-up money John and Alice have accrued, and John is pushed out to face them after Alice states, They are taking my money. Alice confronts them herself, but they are only after the money, clearly aware of the ill effects of the pot, dropping the fact that it was the grandmother who messed with the stop sign at the beginning of the film that caused the crash, to cash in on other people's pain. Showing more cracks in the relationship, Alice is angry at John for letting them get away with the money. After the money is stolen, the pot now seems to be giving less money than it was previously for physical pain, driving them to hurt each other even worse, or alarmingly others to get the same amount of money as before. In a downright destructive decision, John walks up to a paroled murderer in a public bar and starts a fight with him, showing Alice to be now more desensitised to violence, and her concern for John's well-being starting to slide, as she watches him take a beating from the ex-con. The tracker shows up again, 
warning John that it is already consuming him and his wife. He visits his old friend from the start of the film, working as a mechanic. He offers John a job, telling him that whatever is causing him to be in such a state, it isn't worth it, trying to give him a dose of perspective. It cuts to Alice, with a pot reacting to a skateboarder, wiping out near her, paying out more for someone else's pain than themselves, tempting her down a very dark path, leading them to take the pot to an MMA fight, hanging out at a tattoo parlor and hospitals, with the money piling back up and Alice looking for, quote, awful, horrible pain. We see a disturbing change in Alice. In her biggest show of behavior change yet, she gets caught up in, quote, the feeling and tries to run over a homeless man, with John pulling the steering wheel away from her at the last moment. Following the near miss with the homeless man, another more insidious effect of the pot is shown. It also feeds off emotional pain. In an evisceration of John's feelings, Alice cuts into him with words likely more painful than any physical pain experienced in the first half of the film. John is initially reluctant to say anything back, but she keeps goading him until he reveals a hurtful secret of infidelity. The next morning there is an uncomfortable section where they attempt to hurt each other's feelings to emotionally cash in on the pot in a stark comparison of the big beginning of the film with mere physical pain. In an effort to make a little more money, it's found out that Alice had oral sex with her asshole of an ex-landlord, causing an even greater rift in their relationship. They both now appear to be taking shots at each other, and affected by what each other is saying, seeing another downturn in the payments from their pot. They turn to their neighbours and former acquaintances, trying to out their secrets for monetary gain, now clearly becoming horrible people. Their faces have also changed, most of the colour being sucked out of them. They go to Alice's sister's house to reveal a secret sure to devastate the kindly but clueless husband. However, this proves to be the breaking point for Alice, as she stares into her sister's eyes before interrupting John as he was about to expose her secret, revealing there is some humanity left in the pair. However, in a U-turn to what looked to be a promising moment of humanity, Alice promises one last big score to murder some low lives showing just how deep the pot's grasp has on her. John calls her out for being evil, and she denies it, claiming there's nothing evil about wanting more, and calling the pot precious, more evidence of her relationship with the pot being golem-like. Seeing what it's doing to his wife, he goes back to the traveller for help. He tells him that the only way to rob it of his power is for them to willingly hand it over. Knowing she won't give it up easily, he throws himself out of the... Knowing he wouldn't give it up easily, he throws himself out of one of the windows in their home, making her realise how much she cares about him and what is truly important, vowing to give it away. That same night, in one last showing, their douchebag former landlord comes to steal it for himself, after touching it when he, when he tried to destroy it and feeling its dark embrace. They go to his trailer and a shootout ensues between the landlord his partner and the grandsons from earlier, leaving no one alive, except for John and Alice. The couple finally give the pot back to the tracker, who takes it to be stored somewhere safe. In a kind, redemptive sentiment at the end of the film, they send a large amount of money to their snubbed, overworked, struggling friends from the beginning. Alice and John happily back in his old car, with Alice now pregnant drive off into the sunset. This is an interesting and slightly on-the-nose film about the destructive power of excessive money and the lengths some people will go to to attain it. I've not seen many other films quite like this and it has stuck in memory for a while since I've watched it. And that's it. Thank you for watching. A like and sub would be appreciated. Let me know what you thought of the film if you decide to watch it and I'll see you next time.